Something lurks here in the outskirts, an ancient presence, older than the heartland that birthed it. They found it here, deep beneath the factory grounds. It thrums with perfect eternal cadence, sounding your name. Hello there, I'm Mount Payne 27, and this is Dean of Doom, the show we give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wads. Why? because ranking things is fun. Today's episode will be dedicated to Heartland, a seven-level episode made exclusively for the Eternity Engine, released last month by none other than Skillsaw. As if the man himself didn't command enough name recognition, the Heartland team also includes Zazer Acheron on weapon design, legendary playtester Du doing what he does best, Ukiro's Otex texture pack of Eternity fame, Eternity Engine support and testing provided by Altazimuth, and who else but Stuart Rin supplying a new crop of peerless middies. Heartland's monogamy porting-wise is quite unusual for such a prominent release. I'll reiterate, you cannot play this map set on anything other than the Eternity Engine. In fact, Heartland exists in part to demonstrate the engine's technical capabilities and serve as a reference for mappers who want to work with its advanced features but don't know where to start. I'll tell you right now, Heartland is worth the inconvenience of figuring out a new Doom port, and it will inspire more than a few up-and-coming designers. So what's this wad all about? I'll let Skillsaw set the stage in his own words. Heartland takes place in the nation's decaying industrial heartland. An inscrutable evil lurks somewhere beneath the abandoned factory on the city's outskirts, beckoning you closer with every beat of your heart. Before we begin, here's how the show works. Every map gets one grade for quality and one for difficulty. On the quality side, the grades go from A to F. Grade A levels are fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. Difficulty grades go from X to E. X for extreme, E for easy, A through D in between. Keep in mind, I'm not making anybody's list of best Doom players, and I probably won't have the same ideas about what makes a great level as you do. But that's okay. Disagreeing is part of the fun, after all. At the end of the day, this show is really about spreading the joy of Doom. So let's do so. Quickly before we start, the rules are we play on ultraviolence and must pistol start each level. I need to play the wad twice before reviewing it, saves are allowed, and we go for 100% kills in all levels, making exceptions when it's just not worth it. Especially for this episode, we'll of course be playing on the Eternity Engine, with compatibility settings approximating boom strict. No lost soul limit, infinitely tall monsters, you get the idea. Now, to the wad. Map 1, Subway Sandwich. What is this? Sound effects? Moving trains? Shattering glass? Guns akimbo? Subway Sandwich gets Heartland off to a Hollywood start, introducing new weapons, monsters, items, and some quality of life improvements that all but the most die-hard vanilla purists will embrace. I'm referring to the smooth animations, new weapon sounds, blood effects, rocket trails, and the inclusion of the orange armor and mega pack, which serve as discount variants of the green armor and soul sphere, respectively. Taken all at once, these changes can be a bit overwhelming to someone expecting Valiant 2, but you get used to it. After shooting your way out of the subway tunnel, you'll have to battle through an infested center city truckyard of some sort. All these crates full of demons make you wonder who exactly had them shipped here. Next to the red key, you'll find the fire axe, which replaces the chainsaw and is way too much fun. It more than doubles your basic brass knuckle damage and has prodigious reach, perfect for thinning out fodder when ammo is low. Skill saw won't coddle you for long. After you get the rocket launcher, expect to contend with revenants, macubi, hell knights, and arch files in pretty copious numbers. This sewer skirmish introduces the catharsi, a squeaky brown goblinoid armed with a blaster who drops a grenade when killed unless you manage to jib him. The secret wall down here unlocks a nasty fight in a gas station car wash with pinkies, arch files, and more Catharsi. A megasphere is your prize. The ending sends you back underground, satisfies the title pun, and reunites you with an old friend. Subway Sandwich absolutely floored me. Its technical brilliance is matched only by its ebullience, lovingly personified by Stuart Rin's MIDI. It's not a stretch to say that this is my favorite opening map I've ever played. Grade A+, difficulty B-. Map 2, Bruce R. and Son Construction Company. Lower body count, higher elevation. Skillsaw chose the perfect setting to flex the Eternity Engine's power. This in-progress construction site builds ever upward. Your eyes do not deceive you. Bruce R. and Son implements room over room in Doom. Clumsy, untechnical explanation incoming. The Eternity Engine allows for sections of a map to be stacked on top of each other by way of linked portals, a network of line depths that teleport you to different sections of the map instantaneously, arranged according to the map author's need for changes in height. If the right conditions are met, you can even interact with monsters far above you, even though they technically might be very far away if you look at the auto map. For our purposes, let's just say it's magic. Anyway, Bruce R. and Son decelerates considerably, but does have time to introduce two Skillsaw alumni, the Rocket Zombie and the Cybruiser. 
To compensate for the new bestiary, you get a submachine gun, which only barely outshines the dual handguns, and your spirit animal, the super shotgun. I don't know what it is, but no sound replacement for the SSG, however beefy, can ever fill the shoes of good old... Otex is uniquely suited to these visuals, with the strong reds of the steel girders, its broad metallic palette, and wide selection of caution tape textures. This double archfile dance by the blue key includes a subtle twist. The encounter is actually scripted to summon imps and revenants as soon as one of the archfiles dies, so I recommend lowering both their health bars before finishing the job. Bruce R. and Son Construction Company is another wow moment for Heartland, and it won't be the last. Grade A, difficulty C+. Map 3, Reservoir Dog. Let me tell you what Reservoir Dog is about. It's all about a swampy tech base that digs gnarly rock formations and big fights. If Sinkhole Showdown from Ancient Aliens was given a sequel in Ev Eternity, it would look just like Reservoir Dog. This map features free associative open combat, broken up by sections of tense corridor shooting. The dynamic environment complements the Eternity engine's powers of verticality once again, and I'm always impressed with Otex's ability to render natural environments. Reservoir Dog debuts the WAD's last new custom monster, a squelching horror known as the Grell. Not too dangerous, very disgusting. For those of you who are unenthused with the SMG, myself a part of that number, you'll be happy to know that Skillsaw is still in the business of doubling down on bullet weapons. The double SMGs are great for groups of weaker prey and tough single foes owing to their high stunlock chance. Lock them and load them for the next fight, which is this map's calling card and probably the high point of Heartland so far. Draining the water unleashes a glut of demons racing through the mire to tear you limb from limb. It's vintage skill song, buckets of blood and rockets galore, washed down by a pair of arch files. Reservoir Dog coasts from there on out, but watch you don't get sign bruised in this section near the end. Grade A, difficulty B+. Map 4, Routine Flaring and Flailing. Probably the most relaxed map in the set, Routine Flaring and Flailing is another demonically infiltrated industrial complex sinking into the marsh. The runaround start is great fun, gathering weapons and mowing down ranks of roaming monsters. Thankfully, it's only as frantic as you want it to be. I'm not a huge fan of being forced to take this Soul Sphere right before the Red Key fight when I'm already over 100 health. I mean, it would help if I didn't give free hugs to suicide bombers. The Yellow Key fight is a tasty expo for the double SMGs. Put those chain gunners in their place, clear some space, and the arch files a piece of pie. There's a secret weapon somewhere in this map, evidenced by the special tank of ammo they give you at the end, but I never managed to find it. Hey man, secret hunting is a lot tougher without the aid of idclip or a doom wiki page to run crying to. Map 4's MIDI wins the prize for my favorite track title in the OST, and while Stewboy's Heartland tunes mostly evade comparisons to ancient aliens, I think we can all agree that Seed the Shrews would not be out of place in that megawad. Strap in for the next three levels, folks. Maps 1 through 4 look like a tech demo compared to what you're about to see. Grade A-, difficulty B. Map 5. Titan of industry. Well, this beats the hell out of a proud and booming industry. Drink it in. Somewhere beneath this industrial park lies the source of the evil force plaguing the heartland. This is a long map. Be prepared to set aside a solid 45 minutes, and that goes for the next two maps as well. The monster density here is somewhat lower than most of Heartland's first half, with Skillsaw favoring a slow crawl over major pyrotechnics for now. Players more experienced with advanced source ports may not be quite as blown away as I am by all the moving set pieces in this wad, but it's their creative application more than their novelty that impresses me. This long-range shootout with imps, chain gunners, and rocket zombies on the movable bridge is just wonderfully choreographed. It'd make me more tense if I wasn't already just giddy to participate in it. This obligatory suicide squeeze gave me a major pang of nostalgia for Valiant. I gotta play that again sometime soon. I'm not sure if this is a bug or some kind of anti-save scum measure, but when you reload your game in this room, the crushers on this conveyor belt stop working properly, blocking off one of the secrets. A bit annoying, but that secret is far from necessary. After you get the red key and quell a few striking demonic unions, you finally get to see what fuel is all about. Say hello to the flamethrower, a highly lethal weapon 6 replacement which tags monsters with flame projectiles that burn for a few seconds after contact. Quick word of warning before you go all Leo DiCaprio, get too close to whatever it is you're broiling and you'll take damage too. It's tempting to think of the flamethrower as a more powerful version of the plasma rifle, but its penchant for turning you into Joan of Arc when used in tight quarters makes it a poor choice of panic button. Stick with the double SMGs in a pinch. The last two fights are a bit of a letdown. Skillsaw overstuffs you with big gun ammo, and Grells are never a serious threat, except to your ears. <laughs> I think Titan of Industry's greatest success is that it's impressive without being oppressive. Grade A, difficulty B+. Map 6, Get Shafted. Nothing can prepare you for this one, so you might as well jump right in. Get Shafted blows the roof off this map set with the thrust of a space shuttle liftoff. As much as I believe in the power of the written word, there's only so much a good vocabulary can do to describe thrills of this magnitude. So I'm gonna defer to Skillsaw and Stewboy here for a moment. Enjoy the ride.
picture this. Get Shafted has a thousand more enemies than Titan of Industry, but the two maps take about the same time to complete. Scalesaw has a knack for making each increasingly climactic fight feel like the big one. From the railcar rocket fight on two fronts, to the cyber caca blue key face-off, when I got here I was like, here it is, this is the big one! But then comes the cluster bomb launcher fight. Oh boy. The cluster bomb launcher is absurdly powerful, but even more dangerous to use in the flamethrower. Its projectiles explode on impact and drop grenades in a spread back in the direction they're fired from, so if you happen to hit a monster or a wall right in front of you, say your prayers. I call it the serious Sam gun, because it's not advisable to sprint forward while you it. Try to aim between gaps and groups of monsters for maximum effect. Like it or not, you better get used to the cluster bomb launcher because I doubt the map is beatable without it. Turns out, this slugfest you've been watching for the last 30 seconds was just the tutorial room. Behold, Skill Saw's last crescendo. Someone dug up a portal to hell, and it is a gusher. Look at this. Look. At. This. That's about 800 monsters just in this fight, and I managed to win first try in my recording, which is a minor miracle. Get Shafted is a powerhouse, one of Skillsaw's greatest creations, but without Stuart Rin's propulsive, freewheeling, emotional, skyward-reaching MIDI, my god, what would it be? Guys, consider me swept off my feet. Grade A+. Difficulty A. Map 7, The Beating Heart. Heartland's fiery conclusion sets the ball rolling with a rude surprise if you're not already pistol starting. The castle gates require a sacrifice. Well, several sacrifices. Yes, even the super shotgun. Now unencumbered, take your fire axe and step into the arena. Bet you're wondering what this baby could do when you're zerked up. Well, you can pulverize pinkies, eradicate imps, crush cacos, one-hit hell knights, and whack a mancubus with a hearty here's Johnny. Having won your freedom, it's time to contend with one of the nastiest arenas in a map full of nasty arenas. It'll test your limited arsenal of rocket launcher, SMG, shotgun, and fire axe. The second round gets especially heated. Get it? Because you get the flamethrower? My heart goes out to the wad's only spider mastermind. She's no threat at all, really. From here, you get to pick your poison. The grell swarm down the SMG path can smother you if you're not unloading a steady stream of lead. The cluster bomb launcher path is pretty straightforward so long as you never stop firing rockets. And the SSG path is probably the most unforgiving, with its sneaky arch files, hit scanners, narrow corridors, and some wicked catharsis turrets near the end. Just clear the way and flank them is my advice. Now fully re-equipped, it's time to face... Guys, you're never gonna guess what the final boss of Heartland is. It's a big heart. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Skillsaw, Lord of the Puns. The final battle can best be described as a rout. The heart will summon four waves of demonic multitudes, but they stand no chance against you and your backpack full of all-star weapons. Thankfully, you don't have to worry about cyber demons or arch files, and the ground is littered with mega packs, mega spheres, medikits, and armor. Use the cluster bomb judiciously, make the flamethrower your workhorse, double SMG in tight situations, and don't be afraid to pull out the rocket launcher for safer, more tactical damage dealing. Give that big ol' heart a licking between each round until it beats its last. It lacks the precipitous drama of Get Shafted, but the beating heart is a world unto itself. An infernal spectacular with one of the most gratifying boss kill sequences I've come across. Grade A, difficulty A. Map 8, Arrhythmia. Not much to say here except follow your heart. So, Heartland is a towering achievement, and yes, that is very much a pun on the way it was constructed. There's not an ounce of fat on this wad. Every level earns its place, best illustrated by my inability to give a grade lower than A in this episode. As a decidedly traditional player, I went into this map set expecting the Eternity Engine's bells and whistles to be something of an impediment. If you're still skeptical of it, let me assure you, every design decision adds to the experience, and the engine's potential to create set pieces that leave the player agape is very high. Some wads are instantly memorable, but Heartland is instantly nostalgic. The returning cast of demons from the Skillsaw Cinematic Universe is a treat, and Stewboy's compositions strike the perfect balance between Carpe Diem and Yesterday's Whimsy. It's some of his best work to date. I didn't want to give this an automatic A+, just because it's Skillsaw, but he and his team gave me no choice. Difficulty-wise, I think per map, this is Skillsaw's toughest release by a hair's breadth. It feels about right to give it a B+. Now for my Dean's list. Valedictorian. Map 6, Get Shafted. 
Salutatorian, Map 1, Subway Sandwich. Class President, Map 7, The Beating Heart. And the dunce cap goes to... None of them. I'm not giving out a dunce cap today, guys. Heartland is just that good. Thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the wad down below. I'd love to hear what you think, and I'll heart your comments to let you know I've read them. I'd like to take a moment now to acknowledge my generous patrons. Aaron Allen, Aaron Berger, Akali, Alec Wehrman, Alex Topfer, Alex Max, Ari Adair, Builder Sith, Callum Duncan, Kappa Bitch, Cheese Wheel, Chris Duthat, Chris O'Neill, Christophine Place, Kiara P, Crafty One Cal, Dan, Delirium, Dorothy Miller, Emma Essex, Enraged Eggplant, Final Brett, Garu Dave, General Roasterock, Glenn Marmon, Griffin Upchurch, Gus Shade, Holy Hell Revealed When, Jared C. Bly, Jesse Taylor, Josh Ballard, Camille Bernadotte, Leon Staten, Mark Rowland, Marky Music, Master Drew 117, Matthew Gower, Mixer, Mr. Bob Syndiquil, My Olden, Neurometry, Nick Machado, One True Purple, Pyro She, Sega Monkey, Sid Menon, Sir Marcy, Spinner 8, Stupid Nick, Susanna Grimm, Tower Kushino, The Bell Tolls, TJG1289, Turbine 2K5, and Why Bemo Not a Crab. Thank you. I appreciate you all. This is Mount Payne 27, and I'll see you all in the next episode of Dean of Doom.